Well, he is risen. Yes, he is risen indeed. It's Easter Sunday, and what a great uh, morning that we were able to have uh, as we went live, and you were no doubt hopefully able to participate uh, this morning via YouTube, via video at home, to celebrate and worship together with your family the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is our hope. This is what Paul tells the church at Corinth, that Jesus Christ was uh, crucified, that he died, was buried, and rose again according to the scriptures. After he ra raises back to life uh, from the dead, he appears to many people, uh, many named by uh, Paul, and certainly throughout the uh, gospel accounts. <clears throat> he appears to um, the disciples, uh, minus Thomas, and then with Thomas. He appears, peer, appears to a larger group, uh, and at one point, according to Paul, even 500 people all at once. We know that he appears to Cleopas and the other disciple that are on the road to Emmaus, which is another fascinating story from Luke's Gospel. Uh, numerous resurrection appearances of Christ on Easter Sunday. And uh, again, this is why we gather every Sunday, as we um, commemorate and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is our hope. Uh, this is the core of Christianity, uh, the core of our faith, and it is real. It actually happened. I want to just focus uh, on this Sunday uh, afternoon, uh, Sunday evening even perhaps, whenever this gets posted, on one person in particular, Mary Magdalene. Uh, Mary, according to John's Gospel in chapter 20, uh, comes to the tomb. She may have come with the other women, as the other Gospel writers uh, note, or she may have come actually by herself. When she sees the tomb empty, she runs back to tell the disciples, and Peter and John run uh, to the uh, tomb. Of course, we know that uh, John outruns Peter, but does not go in. Peter does, and all of that is, is uh, recounted for us in John chapter 20. But after the group of women have left the empty tomb, Peter and John and the other disciples have left the empty tomb, Mary uh, is there. No doubt, um, when she tells the disciples and they come back to the empty tomb, uh, she falls along behind them, uh, but as they leave, perhaps to tell others, or um, confused in whatever uh, state is going on, we know that Mary is now back at the empty tomb. This is the place where she last saw the body of her Lord and Savior. For many of us, uh, this is why we have uh, burials, we have uh, gravestones, markers of some kind. It's, it's a, a place where we can go and uh, remember the one who has uh, passed on. It, it, it can bring some closure, um, but Mary doesn't know where else to go, and, and uh, she's very confused as to what has uh, happened uh, to the body of Jesus. And so in John chapter 20, starting reading verse 11, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to him, them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher, Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. Mary is distraught, no doubt as all of the disciples uh, were at this time, uh, but uh, she uh, does not understand what's going on. She sees these two angels. Uh, again, this may point to the fact that she went by herself, then went to see Peter and John while the other women encounter the angels. Uh, but uh, she is weeping. Uh, she is beside herself, certainly uh, crying um, a lot, and that is completely understandable and to be expected. But they ask her why she's crying, and it, it, it's not a condescending question or incredulous question. Um, but it, it is a real question in light of the fact that Jesus is risen, which she still has not uh, really come to grips with. She, the only thing that she can think of is that somebody has taken the body. And then Jesus actually asks her the same question and, and, and asks her who she's seeking. Again, it would seem to be fairly obvious, but 
she doesn't recognize him right away, and whether because of her distraught state or whatever, she does not uh, understand who it is. But when Jesus says her name, Mary, she knows who it is. Now there's uh, been an odd translate or interpretation, I should say, of verse 17, where it says, do, Jesus says, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. And for some odd and strange reason, some people have uh, had the interpretation that somehow Jesus, who appears here to Mary, in one of the first appearances, if not the first appearance, post-resurrection, uh, to one of the disciples anyway, that somehow he's in some sort of uh, ethereal state that is not embodied or something, that he's he hasn't yet, uh, post-resurrection, gone to see his father and then come back and, and, and into his body or something. It, it, very weird uh, translations that I've, I've heard um, sort of perpetuated here. What is Jesus actually saying? When Mary knows that it's Jesus... She thought she had lost him to the crucifixion, and now he's back, and she is not going to let him go. And so that's what he's saying to her. Mary, do not cling to me and not let me go. Uh, there's work to be done. The disciples need to know that what you have seen, that you've actually seen me and not just the empty tomb. And I haven't gone yet. I will ascend to my Father. In 40 days or so, so 50 days after um, Passover is Pentecost, and that is when Peter uh, preaches the famous sermon uh, and the Holy Spirit descends and then Peter preaches. So sometime after, or before that, so about 40 days after the resurrection, is when Jesus sends to his Father. So what he's saying in this passage is very simply, Mary, I'm back, and I haven't left yet to go back to my Father. Uh, there's time yet to see me and interact with me. So don't cling to me. Don't hang on to me for dear life. You can let me go and tell the other disciples that I'm back. Um, and so this is what's going on in this scene. Uh, Mary does not want to let Jesus go. She's lost him once. She doesn't want to lose him twice. But Jesus says there's work to be done. You need to go and tell. And it's the same for us today. There's work to be done. We have been encouraging everyone to use the hashtag Jesus Changed My Life and tell the story. We ask that you continue that. This is our task as believers in Jesus Christ. We have believed in the resurrection. The resurrection is real. We have trusted in it, are trusting in it, and it has changed our whole lives, and we want everybody to know about it. And so our job is the same as Mary's. Go and tell. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's tell everyone we know about Jesus Christ, the righteous.